Welcome to The Crown Podcast. This time around, I'm interviewing Angela Long, bronze medal winning para powerlifter who came to the sport later in life. Now, I'm looking forward to chatting to her about how she got into the sport in the first place, how she took that leap to take it to competitive level and how she juggles all of it with her career and her job in UCC. It's going to be a really interesting conversation. So welcome to the studio, Angela. Thank you. Thank you for taking the the time to come in. Did you fair to come? I came from Toker. From Toker, also not not, not too far. I'm really interested in hearing about your journey into para powerlifting because for lack of a more sensitive way of putting it you came to it later in life very yeah (laughs) (laughs) um so like were you involved in sports much prior to the powerlifting never 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 no you alluded to um like gym and fitness so that was always important to you was it um no um once I turned 40 um, I had time to spare in the mornings. My husband had started a new job and he doesn't drive. So I was driving him to work and I was free from 6.45 every morning until 9 when I started work. And I just thought I need to put this time to good use instead of sitting drinking tea and reading my book, waiting to start work. So I took up um, swimming in the Mardag Arena and then I was kind of quickly encouraged by a lovely girl, D down there to... Um, starting the weights gym and a tiny little bit of gentle persuasion and she got me in and it just took off there from from then I was doing it for I've been doing it since Jesus 2016 maybe oh fab yeah and just in 2022 then after Covid and we were all back at the gym full time I thought maybe compete just once yeah. to get off the bucket list and then we'll move on and I was always going to continue with like you know working away in the gym and doing my little bit of light powerlifting but I was going to leave the competing side of it yeah. I was going to do it once and that was it and did you see it because you're a wheelchair user did you see it um affecting your ability to do things like transfer and use your wheelchair oh, effectively that was the driving force behind continuing with um my training every morning because it was my upper body strength was just like going from strength to strength, transferring to and from your car on a wet day, you want to have that mm-hmm. strength and control to be able to get yourself in and just the one. So just as soon as I realised how, how good that was for me, I carried on. It was more like training for living yeah. than anything else. Yeah, it sounds like a real, like the practical applications was a totally, real motivator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very practical. And how did para powerlifting come onto your radar? My coach that I used to train with D in the Mardig she used to say to me you could compete you could definitely compete and I was like no 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 and again after Covid I think that changed the whole world and I was like yeah maybe I will Um, so I got in touch with Roy Gearin who is the the head coach famous um, in para powerlifting famous Paralympian um, I got in touch with him and he invited me down to train with himself and two other athletes they were heading off a few weeks later to the Euros in Tbilisi, in Georgia, and they asked me to come down and train, and I did. And he ripped my performance to shreds that day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I went home, you know, took it all on board and trained away, and the Nationals were coming up in November that year. And he encouraged me to, to go through with it and to take part, and I did. And here we are. <laughs> How did you get on with the, the Nationals? Um, I won four gold at Did the you? Nationals yeah yeah first oh, time wow. out, so that must have been really um, motivating in terms yeah, of like your own ability yeah. Yeah, yeah to go from your first national gold to then international bronze, bronze what within yeah. Yeah. six or eight months was it yeah um, the Nationals were November 2022 and the Worlds were August 2023 so yeah, ten months maybe. Oh wow! Ten early, ten, yeah, nine or ten months. So all that 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 working out prior to to your concentration really must have yeah, yeah. must have fed into it. What did it feel like being? Because like I was watching, I was watching those the 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 power power lifting the worlds in Dubai, and the atmosphere seemed incredible. What was it like when you got the results, or you you knew that you had won the the bronze? I didn't realise it was my friend Gemma who was back in Ireland and she texted me and said 
the guy there that's doing the commentary just said that you um, were possibly in line for a bronze medal because I had won my bronze in the legends category. So I wouldn't have known the result until okay. the whole competition was ended. And there was three different groups. I think there was maybe 29 people in my weight category. So there was A, B and C. And I would have been in the first group, C group. And then the total result we wouldn't have known until the very end of the A group. So I was just delighted because I got two lifts. Oh, and that's no, I unreal. Thought, that's made my whole training and trip out here worthwhile. I got two lifts. I didn't let myself down. I got a personal best, two personal bests. I'm thrilled. And then Gemma texted me. She said, I think you're in line for a bronze. And I went to find Tyke, Tyke Buckley, my, one of my coaches. And Tyke's like, oh, I actually think you are. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it was just mad. And what was it like? What was what were what were, what were your friends and family's reactions to that? Was it like you seem like a very incredibly motivated and having come off the back of the nationals, it must have been like, oh well, that's that's Angela's well able for something like that, or was it that? I don't know. I was going out and out, like I, the support I got first of all from my friends and family was second to none. They were fantastic. The house, you'd swear I was going to, I don't know, what's the biggest sporting event in. In the, the World Cup, the soccer yeah, World Cup yeah. or something like that. It, it, that's the way it was. And there was cards and gifts and people calling and they gave me a big send off. There was a big crowd down to the house. And and I was like, geez, I'm just going to go out here and hopefully get a couple of lifts. I don't think I'll be coming back with anything. And they were back again at the house the day I came home, a big crowd outside with their Irish flags and all <laughs> that. It was just, it was incredible. Oh, that's, it really that's, was. That's amazing. Can I ask you about, I suppose, your... You're working in UCC, you've, you're, yeah. you're working, you're obviously working out. What kind of a time commitment is the, the para power lifting specifically for you? And how, like, how do you manage that time with your, with your career? I think for me, because my training had always been for years, first thing in the morning, that over the years was a habit. Mm-hmm. So that was always my go-to first thing in the morning. Like if I don't go to the gym now at seven, my day is like... Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Seven days a week? No, 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 okay. no, no. <laughs> Monday to Friday. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, five days is still five, pretty. Five days, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty so, uh, enormous. But that's that's just my routine now. So then that was already that was a habit. Mm-hmm. By the time I decided that I was going to compete and and do this properly, so I was in that headspace. I was already in that routine. But um, like, it is hard going to do your training, you know, for the couple of hours in the morning and then go off and do a full day's work mm-hmm. and it's a long day yeah what are your own personal ambitions for power power your own power power lifting do you see do you have a, a a silver or a gold in mind or a weight category you're you're working towards i think i'll stay in my current weight category which is up to 73 kgs mm-hmm. because i'm nice and comfortable <laughs> at that weight and i don't want to put any pressure to lose any more weight it's hard enough to maintain Mm -hmm. your weight like somewhere in the middle Um, so I'm going to stay in my weight category we're going to the World Cup in Georgia in June and my ambition for that would be to beat my personal best from last time out Mm -hmm. whether there's going to be a medal situation or podium situation I'm not sure but I just want to lift more and I, I want to improve. I want to be better than I was the mm-hmm. last time around. Will um will Roy and Tig and all the others hear yeah. that you don't you're you're comfortable and now get annoyed and want to, to push you towards uh Roy and Tig are always pushing like you give Roy an inch and he takes a mile. <laughs> yeah. But that's good because it means he's like He's a great motivator. He's a great coach. He can clearly see something that he you're can, not necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing yeah, in yourself yeah, yet. Yeah. yeah, that's that's always the the, the sign yeah. of a really good he believes motivator more than I do. But he's trying to like instill that sense of belief into me. But yeah. I guess if it comes from him, yeah, there has I mean to he knows what he's talking about. He does. In he really, really him. does. Yeah, and like in general, para power lifting. Especially in Munster, in Munster is going from strength to strength. It like is, it, yeah. it seems to have a really great community down here. What excites you about the future of para power lifting? Well, the team that are there currently, I think I'm maybe twenty five to thirty years older than most of them. So they're all young and they're all coming through and they're doing so well at this age. Give it another ten years. 
and we're going to have an amazing bunch of kids coming yeah. through and doing really really well it's very exciting to see to see the likes of Brittany Renzi and and Neve Buckley and Rory yeah. Devlin coming through Phenomenal coming through people. and performing yeah. Yeah. and the, the 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 whole the whole team you seem to have a really um committed group of they are, people they're very good we've just come back from a training camp in Chile that was on just this weekend past and we had John Amos a former British Paralympian and team GB coach over with us for the two days and everyone just like gained so much from from John and from like Roy and it was fantastic. They're everyone's motivated. Everyone they're doing really really well, really really well. What would you say? Because you, I mean, you've you said it yourself. You're that little bit older than than the others. What would you say to someone uh, of a similar vintage who is vintage? Vintage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to 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 find uh, politer way, ways of saying it. Who would who are considering or maybe looking for something to to push themselves uh, what is weight training or power power lifting something you'd recommend to people I 100% would it's only going to improve your upper body strength yeah definitely power lifting yeah. weight training for sure and like don't worry about age because I'm a great one out to say that because Roy's been spent in the last two years trying to tell me, ages, you're nothing, you're only young in powerlifting. But like when I went to Dubai, there were so many people older than me. Oh, yeah. So I don't feel like such a. Oh, that's interesting. That the, the, there's anymore. a community. Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot older than me. If people are interested in getting involved, what's the best route to go down? I think they should contact um, IWA Sport. For anyone listening who wants to keep up to date with Irish para powerlifting, we recommend you follow IWA Sports on socials. Um, we're a friend of the podcast, Jack Squibb, and the team do a wonderful job following the sport. You can also find information about what the sport entails and how to get involved. Thank you, Angela, for calling in today. I really Thank do appreciate it. Thank you for having it. me. It was a real pleasure. Good luck in Tbilisi. And is is it, is there something in Manchester coming up in the meantime as well? No, the World Cup was originally in Manchester, oh, but it was I changed to Tbilisi in Georgia. Oh, OK. So. Apologies. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Thanks so much. This podcast has been recorded at the Crown Centre. For more information about the topics discussed in this episode, please see the show notes in the description. For more information about the supports Crown provides to families living with neurophysical disabilities in Munster, please see www.crowncentre.ie.